Good morning, everyone. This message is going to be what God expects from us who call ourselves Christians. Because a lot of people wave the flag of a Christian, but they're not walking the walk. And it's very important in what God has to say about that. So I want to talk about that. The grandkids coming up, how do you like that? Isn't it beautiful? You come up and do that. I know this old one here that... Uh, this one grandchild got up on my knee and said, Grandpa, make a noise like a frog. And I said, I don't, can't really do that. Yeah, come on, make a noise like a frog, Grandpa. You can do that. I said, well, I really don't think I can. Please, Grandpa. And I said, why are you so insistent I do that? He said, because I heard Mama and Daddy talking in the bedroom last night, and they said, when Grandpa croaks, we're all going to Hawaii. <laughs> It's an old one, but it's a good one. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, I'm, a, I'm here to preach about this Jesus that saved my soul. Amen. All right, I know this Jesus. I know, what you, I know you're all Christians here. The one I served saved my soul. Amen. He transformed this preacher, or this bar owner, into a preacher. Amen. He does those kind of things. And why I say those very, real often is because... I want people to know that he still does it today. Amen. It goes on today. There's too many doctrines out there that's, that's yesterday's stuff. No. He's a healer today. He changes hearts. He'll set you free today. Amen. That's what he does. So and I just want to say here that he actually transformed my heart and turned me into a preacher. And then we started the church and the whole thing. All about God. All about Jesus Christ. Ezekiel 36 there's a prophecy there that God, the Lord told Ezekiel. He said to him, I will sanctify my great name when I am holy in you. Now that's pretty important how he said that. Before it was always sacrifices outside. 
He said, when I am holy in you. He's talking about when his son, Jesus Christ, comes to live with us. Amen? You understand that? And so, in John 3, Jesus tells Nicodemus just how this happens. How do I get, how does this happen that he becomes holy in us? Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, people struggle with that born again. Sometimes they, I've had a phone call before getting after me about that's my opinion. No, God said that. I didn't. So when you get mad at somebody, get mad at him if you dare. Anyway, that's what born again is. It's, it's a spiritual happening. That's what happened to me. You heard the testimony of the family. That's what happened to them. Jesus comes into your heart and he changes you. Now, in, the, in uh, 1 Corinthians 2.4 is where... Uh, I'm going to read that. It's where Paul is telling uh, how church really is. This is the, what the church is compared to. There's a lot of churches out here that live in however they want to do. A lot of different doctrines. But Paul saying, here's what church is. He says, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But, but, in demonstration of the spirit and power. Why? So that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in what? The power of God. That no man should have the glory. That's what he's talking about. When a preacher preaches, he should not have the glory. It all goes to God. Why? Because there's a demonstration goes on. Demonstration means action of showing evidence. Action of showing evidence. Brothers and sisters, you are that evidence. Are you a Christian already? Come on. Are you, are you proud to raise your hand and say, yes, I'm a Christian? Amen. Jesus is my Savior. Hallelujah. You can do that. You know what else is legal? To shout, hallelujah, praise the Lord for what you've done. You can actually do that. Instead of just jumping up when you want to bingo. You can actually do that <laughs> for Jesus in church. <laughs> right? Yeah, come on. That's good. Give me an amen on that. Amen. Tell your flesh to obey the Holy Spirit today. Okay? So that you are that evidence that God sanctified His great name. We are set apart and made holy in Him. God took the Spirit of His Son, He said, and put it in us. Now you are what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. You are His house. He lives there. In you. That's how he became holy in us. That's good. Amen? Amen. Colossians 1.22 says, Now we are holy, unblameable in his sight. Because of what his son did. That his son went to the cross, died for our sins, so we don't have to pay. He did it for us. And then he sets us on this rock. And he empowers us to be his minister. You are a witness. You are that evidence that Jesus Christ lives today. Amen. Right? Are you, give me an amen on that. Are you that evidence? You are. Changed life is that evidence. There has to be something happen when you become born again. When Jesus comes into your heart, something takes place. I know when he came into my life, I wasn't the same. He changed my mind. He changed my heart. I was a different person. He gave me love for hate. Joy for sadness. Amen. I mean, he came into my life. And, he changed, and I got to tell those things. I got I to gotta shout that out. Because that's what he did for me. Good. He came into my life. And he put my family back together. Now I got a, two sons preaching the gospel besides me. Hallelujah. That's beautiful. Can you praise the Lord for that? what he does in your life. Every one of you are his evidence. Evidence that you are a Christian. You're waving the flag. We go to church. We say we're a Christian. But are we in some church that don't talk about the power of God anymore? That happens. I know this one man, the blind man. <laughs> That's a good story. 
with the religious, religious leaders, they uh, called him back in there and said, um, wait a minute now, this, um, give God the praise here. Give God the glory, he says. And he said to him, because uh, that man that did that for you, he's a sinner. <laughs> and that man said, well, I don't know about that, but I know I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> if Woo! that don't, remember that old saying? That don't make you stand up and suck like a newborn calf? Nothing will. <laughs> when Jesus comes into your life, those things happen. And that's what happened to me. He came into my life and he changed me. I was a different person all the way around. My wife and I got back together. We were separated. I tell you, this is the power of God today. Amen. He still That's does good. that today. That's he good. heals the hearts of people. That's good. He comes in there and does those things. So we are that evidence that we're set free, that we love. We have a new desire. Do you have, did, you have, did your desire change when you accepted the Lord? Amen. Ask yourself right now, am I that evidence? What do I have for evidence? What do I have? That's good. Examine yourself. The Bible says that. Examine ourselves. To see if we're in that faith. What evidence do we have? Did your desire change? Or do you just do the same things you used to do? Something takes place because a supernatural thing happened to you. He changed you. You're no longer that same person anymore. I might look the same, but I'm not the same as I was. That old guy before is gone. Praise God. By the grace of God, I'm telling you, by his power, by his strength. I could not do anything. I was I was a terrible person. I really was. Don't aim on that now, honey. <laughs> then anyway, so that that's you. I think of that song that uh, Rick wrote about what evidence do you have to stand? But you said what grounds do you have to stand on in that song? The grounds is he said, as the enemy comes along, he said, what grounds do you have to say that you are a Christian? Because I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. Amen. Holy Ghost filled and water baptized and whatever else went with that song. That's what it's about. That's what happened. I can't help but share what God did for me. Yes. He did not do that for me to keep it to myself. He wants me to share that. Right. Whatever you want to do with it, you can do with it. But I'll tell you what, God's in the changing business. You know what? God did not come to uh, buy the turnkey people. I know when I bought that house at, in the port there, it was, everything was good in it. So the realtor says, it's a turnkey, right? You walk in and live. You don't have to fix anything. Well, God don't buy those guys. He mm. buys fixer-uppers. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and you were all fixer-uppers. What do you do? <laughs> you might sit there thinking, well, nothing wrong with me. Yeah, there was. Right there was something wrong with you. <laughs> Just the fact Good. that you even thought that something wrong with you. <laughs> you are lost. You are dead until Jesus comes into your life. Then you became alive. That's good. You Amen. were dead in your sins. He says that. Born again is the born again makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. That you become alive now. You're a new person. Amen. Spiritually a new person. So there you are. Fix her up her. Now it's one of the things she likes to get out of our life is one of the two things that I think of the most is unforgiveness people hang on to. They hang on to unforgiveness. That's like cancer to the body. That unforgiveness, so, so many people think, well, I've forgiven. I've forgiven them. Well, I nail them down sometimes. And I said, well, what do you do when you meet them on the street? Do you turn your head and pretend like you don't see them? Well, yeah. Well, then you haven't really done it yet. You're just lying to yourself is what you're doing. When you are set free, I don't say you have to go hobnobble with it. But something happens when you truly forgive. And another one is this. One of the worst ones in our leadership today, I'm sorry, in the government, is such a bad example for our children and for us. Blame. One of the worst things, and the enemy loves that. It started back in the garden, didn't it? Yeah, Yeah. That's true. Adam and Eve good. started blaming It's good. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have ate that, but she gave it to me. You know, and all that kind of stuff. Well, we do that all the time. I've done some marriage counseling. It's always blaming. We always blame. Well, I wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have said that. 
I only blew up because he told me this, or she said that. So we're always blaming, blame, blame. What's the matter with you today that you're walking like you? Well, my mom and dad, the way they treat No. <laughs> God sets you free. You're free. That's good. He takes some of the things away. He buries that stuff. It's no longer there. Search your heart today, right now. And this, this is church. Yeah. Yeah. Search your heart. Yeah. And see, because the Holy Spirit's talking to you right now. Because I know you. Because I know my Holy Spirit. I know this Jesus that I serve. He's the one that's alive today. And he's the one that will change anything. You don't have a problem too big for him. You do not have anything yeah, too so big good. for the Holy Spirit. Because we all are a mess. Amen. And he comes in there and he fix, he's a fixer. Hallelujah. Over. He'll take that big couch of self-pity out even. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, yeah, we have that one too. And the murmuring and complaining. I don't like to mention that one because I do that quite a bit. <laughs> it's a beautiful couch in this old house of mine. It is called a murmuring and complaining couch. And I, and I mean, you slide it out the door to get God gets rid of that. I quit murmuring and complaining. It, God, God. But dang it, and then it snows again. Oh, <laughs> dang that snow. Is it ever going to quit? Is it ever going to stop? I was shoveling the sidewalk this day, and the Lord spoke to my heart. I'm right halfway up the sidewalk. <laughs> he said, Raymond, this is the way I built the world. You're the one living here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> so, anyway, blame is a bad spirit. It is. And it loves to blame. Because it takes what? It takes it off of you. That's Not my fault. He did it. She did it. He made me. All these kind of things. You know what? I always tell myself, my wife, and I'll tell every he talked, sang a song about marriages. If you fix yourself, that's all God has. You couldn't fix nobody else if you wanted to. Mm, You're good. not don't have that ability to do that. That's good. All you can do is point out faults. I had all my wife's goodness buried under all the things I didn't like about her back when we were separated, before we got saved. I couldn't even see who she really was anymore. But I'm telling you something. When God came into my life that night and changed me, when I looked at her, after he came into my life, I didn't even know what was wrong. I had such a love for her. Oh, man, I looked at her. She looked at me and she said, Raymond, you look like you're 16 years old. All that left me, all that pressure, all that heaviness left. God. That's called born again. Amen. And I looked at her, and I had a love for her. I said, what was our problem anyway? I didn't get to see that. Till later on, it started to show up a little bit again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We started, we had to live this life. We did. We have these things going on between us. She's an extrovert, I'm an introvert. Now, if anybody understands any of that stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. I know some of you have heard this a lot of times, but I'll tell you something. Everybody I deal with, that's what they're dealing with mm -hmm. right there. Introvert, extrovert, and a lot of things, a lot of different degrees in all of that. So, ask yourself, what evidence do I have That's good. that Jesus, or God's, made his name holy in me? Which that name he said, I will make my name, is the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the name. That's is above all names is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him is the power to separate. In Him is the power to heal. I could ask you right now, if whoever wants to come up here for prayer, if you, if you have the faith to do that. I'm not talking about super faith. I'm talking about, would you want to come up? If you've got something you're dealing with, I'll, I always have an altar call. You want to come up, I'll pray with you. Amen. I can't guarantee you one thing. Not one thing. In this whole world. I can't guarantee anything. But I one thing I can guarantee in Jesus is He will set you free. Amen. He will change you. It's not a maybe, He will. Amen. I know this Jesus. I serve Him. He's a He's a fixer upper. And everybody's got something that needs to be fixed. I know they do. Amen. So I'm gonna pray right now and I'm gonna ask God. Just to touch your heart. If you want to come up for prayer, 
don't sit back and say, well, I'll be embarrassed or somebody might think I got a problem and all this kind of thing. Don't let your flesh do that to you. Mm -hmm. With this many people sitting here, there's people, there's quite a few here, I can tell you right now, that would like to come for prayer. I know that. God has given me a gift of discernment. And I know these things. I can't tell it all about you, but I can tell that there's many people here that have dealing with something that God could set you free. If you come up here. Let's get in that prayer mode right now. All a prayer mode is, is let's come to Him. He says, if you are saved, then look up for your affections. Look up. Because that's where it comes from. Father God in heaven. Here we are. Here we are again. Having that church. Preaching your gospel. Father the Holy Spirit doing his job now. Convicting hearts. Want to help people. Want to set them free. Want to bless them. Want us to be more like him. Want things out of our life that's bothering us. God, here you are because you're full of love, grace, and mercy. And you want the people right now, and I know you're talking to the hearts of people right now. You're talking to them. You're saying to some, come on up. Come on up there. You've been dealing with this long enough. Go on. And get rid of it. So, Father, I just ask your anointing now to touch that person or those people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much.